and I felt that. Uh, her daughter, Liza, I adore her. She's a huge success right now. She married a friend of mine, David Guest, uh, who is a very strange fellow. <laughs> Bengali, but he's got the weight off of her. He's got her singing again. I mean, just, her body is looks great. Her eyes are getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> oh, it's true. I I, uh, I was invited to the wedding. I couldn't go because I Smithsonian Institute was honoring me. You can now mail me up on a, on a wall. <laughs> my tap shoes uh, to the Smithsonian, and you saw this commercial tonight? Well, uh, I gave that dance costume with the high, high top hat and all. I, I was just in Washington, D.C. I just returned about three days ago, and I presented it. I presented Isn't that nice? Presented it. Uh, I presented the costume to the Smithsonian on stage in, in a big park. It's seated at, well, they all sat on the ground, most of them, 2,000 people. And I started to get tears in my eyes because I thought, here I am, a little nobody from Texas, you know, and I've come this far that they're keeping my tap shoes and they're keeping this costume. What a great honor. What a great honor. So many people, when because um, I talk about these years, and uh, they say that Louis B. Mayer got Judy on drugs, and it's all their fault. And at, at the studio system, that she, what was your response to that? Well, that's bullpucky. <laughs> L. B. Mayer never got her on drugs. Uh, she had some. Her mother, uh, when she was very young, uh, she would give her a sleeping pill at night. And then in the daytime, she was kind of like, Bleh, and she would give her uh, a pill, something like speed, but it wasn't speed, but something that kept her up to keep her going. And that's what started that whole thing. Uh, but the producers, like Mayer and, uh, and all of them over there, they didn't know. They were pleased that she was on the set. But somebody squealed. They had a doctor, Dr. Feelgood, we called him. He had anything to help you get your butt on the stage so that the producers could be on time, you know. But I really think that it all started with her mother, who was a lovely, lovely lady. But she was trying to get her on her feet, and uh, it ended in a disaster. She should never, ever have died at, at that early age. And Liza was just like a little Minnie Mouse. She, followed her mother's tracks and wound up being a drug addict, drinking booze and all. But she has that same marvelous, marvelous talent. That energy, the energy, they both had it. And to see Liza today, I was invited to go back to the Beacon Theater thing and do Shaking the Blues Away with her by David Kiss. And uh, we're gonna save it for a later time. But I really would be thrilled and honored to have done it with Liza, because she's one of my favorite people. Yeah. Now, how did you avoid those pitfalls, Annie? Because you worked so hard there. You had to be out there sweating and, you know, everything done before uh, computer graphics. So that was you doing those long takes and dancing like that. It was me. <laughs> How did you avoid, you know, the drugs, the alcohol, oh, the pro you know? Well, honey, remember I told you, I had a mother that would have a baseball bat. She had a baseball bat, my mother. And if anybody came near me that tried something funny, boy, they really got it. They got it. And L.B. Mayer, for some reason, fancied himself, really stuck on me at one point. I was at Columbia Pictures when that happened. I wasn't over at MGM. And my mother 
I took it outside one afternoon and she said, Mr. Mayor, I'm glad my daughter thinks you're such a wonderful man, like a father, because her father wasn't very good to her. But she said, you should be proposing to me, not to her. Of that. <laughs> he knew talent. He didn't hold it against you. He, you know, he let you be cast. Yeah, that's why he's a great gentleman. But he did do things like break down and cry and things like that to get an actor to do something that they really didn't want to do in the way of a movie. And he, when there's something, and then he, you know, he. He, he, he was very well, well respected by the actors, but he'd pull these tacky scenes of crying and all that. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't with the stars. Would you go to other sets at MGM and watch people and say, oh, that's genius? Well, I went uh, before I did Easter Parade, or maybe it was afterward, uh, take me out to the ball game. I went down and watched Judy sing that marvelous song, what the heck was the name of it? Um, the one where she wore the straw hat and carried the cane. Get Happy? The yeah, Get Happy number? it was called Get Happy. Right. And uh, From Summer Stock, sat there, it was tacked on And little Liza was running around. She was about five years old. And they were having trouble making her be quiet. I said, come over here, honey. Sit in my lap, you know. So I held her in my lap while her mama did this number, you know. And uh, she was so great and get happy. I think that's my favorite number yeah. that Judy did. And uh, a lot of people, you know, try to tell me that, that that didn't happen. It most certainly did happen. I held that baby in my arms. Maybe that's why I feel so close to her today, you know, mm -hmm. because I developed a kind of a love for, for Liza and that baby. One of the great, uh, great things about studying about you is you went to all the nightclubs. You were part of the social scene. I'd see a picture of, uh, I mean, there was Tyrone Power dancing at Ciro's, and there was Ann Miller right there. You were part of that whole scene. Well, I like to go to a good party. I think it's good. <laughs> It's because I worked so hard, you know, on the sets after you finish rehearsing, you can take a, a towel and just wring it out. I mean, I just lost so much weight and uh, it's hard. Fred was right when he said this next to ditch dig. So I'd go home and take a bath, blow dry my hair and everything, put a lot of perfume on, put some pretty ruffly things on. And I love that, just to get away from the image of, you know, busting my butt so hard. But I really, truly love a good party. Did the stars did the stars like to make big entrances? For instance, with someone like Maria Montez? No, I'll tell you someone to... <laughs> this is so mean of me. <laughs> this is so mean. One night I went to Ciro's, and I went with uh, my agent, who was very nice. He was single. Uh, and anyway, thank God. Uh, and uh, we were seated right by, they had like two big steps, and they, they weren't very well lit. And uh, there was a big bar, and you went past the bar, and there were two steps into the main d dining room. And then it had like a little area where you could ballroom. And they put on fabulous shows. Well, we were dining, and in came Marlene Dietrich in this gorgeous beaded gown. I'll never forget how gorgeous. And this white fox coat that drug on the floor. It was so beautiful. And they had spotlights at that entrance so everybody in the whole uh, dining room could see it. She walked in and she was posing and she threw this thing like that. And when she threw this thing like that, she stepped forward. She didn't know there were steps there. <laughs> she fell flat on her derriere. Terrible. She didn't get hurt, but just took the stuffing out of her. <laughs> uh, that's me. Uh, it must have been great to socialize.
lies with those people, though. I mean, well, it, it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, looking at some of the most exciting oh, right. people. They were, you know, I think the golden era was more darn fun. Mm -hmm. And the people, well, there was some, they didn't naughty things, too. They weren't the Virgin Mary. But they really what, do you, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, it wasn't publicized, but I knew a lot of things about what happened to a lot of people on the MGM lot. <laughs> about you, but this could have actually made you a huge amount of money. You actually really invented pantyhose. Yes, I did. <laughs> See? And we all have to thank her, am I right? Uh, men, don't, men don't think they're so hot. <laughs> And uh, I did this wonderful number. I thought it was fun. It, it was called Streamlined Sheep. Shape, shape, streamlined shape. And it was done with nothing, almost just drums. It was just me and these wonderful people with their legs crossed back.